so today we're going to answer this question. Um, what makes the poles cold and the equator warm? So the simple answer to the question um, that I posed about why the poles are cold and the equator is warm um, is because of the sun. All right, and this is a diagram straight from the chapter 17 lecture from your textbook, and it shows why. Um, it's due to the angle at which the sun hits the earth. All right, so if we take a look down here at the equator, the sunlight um, is directly overhead. So that means that the sun's rays hit the earth perpen perpendicularly, <laughs> in a perpendicular way. And you can see that here, okay? Um, that means, and the top picture here, that there's more um, solar radiation per unit of surface area. So the temperatures are gonna be warmer. Here at the poles, the angle, the sun hits the earth at a lower angle, less than perpendicular. So that same amount of solar radiation, because it's the same sun, is spread out over a much wider area. So the temperatures that um, any person or any living thing living at the poles is gonna experience is gonna be less because that same amount of solar energy is spread out over a much wider area. So temperatures are gonna be cooler. So the whole purpose of this video is for me to show you a demo that I do in class um, with a flashlight and the ceiling that really helps to um, solidify this experience. So I hope it helps. Okay, so we're gonna demonstrate the difference in the angle of incidence of solar radiation at the equator compared to at the poles, okay? So I've got a flashlight and um, I'm putting the flashlight straight at the ceiling. So this is simulating the uh, angle of incidence of the sun and the solar, therefore the solar radiation at the equator, okay? So at the equator, the sun's rays hit the surface of the earth perpendicular. So um, the rays are more direct and the uh, solar radiation is gonna be greater, which is why the equator is warm, okay? So I'm gonna take a couple steps towards the, no, not too far, there we go, all right? Now, I'm gonna simulate the curvature of the earth's surface. I can't curve the ceiling, so I'm gonna curve the shape of the, um, the shape, the uh, angle of the flashlight. So if I curve it, okay, and I take it out away from myself, I've curved, I've like arced the um, flashlight. So what you see, it's the same flashlight, right? The same amount of solar radiation hitting, but that radiation is spread out over a much bigger area. This, um, if I were to measure the area that the light covers, um, you know, as I move it towards the front of the room versus straight up over my head, it's a much wider area, okay? And I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but that blurp out there um, is a lot dimmer, okay, than it is um, when I put it right up over my head, okay? So if the light is dimmer out there, that solar radiation is spread out over a much wider area. So if you're standing under any one of those spots, it's, you're not gonna be feeling as much solar radiation. So the temperatures that you feel are gonna be colder, right? So that's the connection between um, the angle of incidence of solar radiation and temperature, which is a basic explanation for why the equator is warm and why the poles are cold.